So thank you for joining me tonight to learn more about long-term internships in health studies and kinesiology. My name's Alyssa, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the experiential learning coordinator, the student-facing person, supporting undergraduate students in health studies and kinesiology. And I'd like to begin today with a land acknowledgement. Right now, my feet are planted um, in London, Ontario, on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenape Walk, and Chinookton Nations on lands connected with the London Township and Sombre Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. Uh, what you'll see on your screen right now is an orange QR code. And where this website goes is um, to the Indigenous Learning Honor, which I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of. This is a really amazing distinction that can go on your official transcript. There are some academic requirements and some non-academic requirements to be able to get this kind of distinction on your degree. So for example, for some of the academic requirements, there are certain courses that students who are looking to pursue the Indigenous Learning Honor would take, um, either maybe offered in Indigenous Studies or that have kind of been vetted and shown to have a certain percentage of Indigenous content to kind of work towards you learning more in that area. And there's also some non-academic requirements like attending certain workshops and events and that kind of thing. Um, it's, uh, it's really cool offered by our Office of Indigenous Initiatives. So definitely go to the QR code and check it out. So here's what I hope to get through tonight, tell you more about what is a long-term internship, what are the benefits, we'll go through academic eligibility, the internship courses themselves, we'll talk about fees, and then you'll hear from our current interns, we'll do a bit of a panel since we have, uh, sorry, current and former interns, since we have three people who uh, are graciously sharing their time with us tonight. And then I'll give you a bit of an orientation in Western Connect, which is a super important website for those interested in internship. So let's get into the first part. What is a long-term internship? So internships are extended work experiences. They are eight, 12, and 16 months, and they begin in May or September. And these happen in between your third and your fourth year. So what that means is that it's going to extend your degree by either that 8, 12, or 16 months. These are paid experiences. Um, the minimum kind of wage would be minimum wage or higher, depending on the opportunity. They're full-time, so students are typically working between maybe 35 to 40 hours per week. And they'll be at an organization that is related to kinesiology or health studies, depending on what program you're in. So I know it can be a little bit tricky to wrap your head around the timeline. So I put a little example together for you. So right now we're in fall winter of 2023. So for those that would be eligible, you would currently be in year three. And that would be when you would be applying for internship jobs. Kind of this fall, winter, and potentially even the spring for an opportunity that starts next September. Now in winter and spring of this year, and maybe even the summer, is when those year three students who have been applying for internship jobs would probably be doing some interviews for those jobs if they were selected. And then for this student, in my example, they started their internship or will start their internship in May 2024. So this upcoming summer. This student in the example is doing a 16 month internship. So during this time, they're not taking classes. We'll talk about kind of like the one uh, caveat of that a little bit later, but ideally, uh, or in general, I would say, most students are just focusing on the internship course and uh, working at their internship is kind of primarily what they do. So this student would do that for 16 months starting in May which means that they will come back for fourth year in September, 2025. Um, so again, 16 months after they started their internship, their internship is finished and they would return to full-time classes for year four. I hope that helps kind of conceptualize the timeline. So some of the benefits of doing an internship are that you're gonna have 
eight, 12, or 16 months of full-time experience in your field before you graduate. And this is really amazing as an undergraduate student because while people are students, many only have capacity for maybe part-time work or full-time work in the summer. And this would be a full-time experience in your area of study, in your field. It's a great chance to build those relationships in your field through networking while you're at your internship. You're going to be earning a salary, which can help you pay off your degree or maybe save up for something else afterwards. You'll be developing your skill set and putting what you learn in classes into practice in ways or seeing those linkages in a workplace. And it also gives you a chance to see what you like and don't like before you graduate to get a better understanding of what career path you might be interested in to inform your future studies and also your future employment. There's nothing better than getting some hands-on experience because that's really how you get a taste for if you like a certain kind of work or maybe if it's not the best fit for you. So you'll get to experience some of that before you graduate. Now let's get into the academic eligibility. So the requirements would be that you've completed second year in the School of Health Studies or Kinesiology, depending on your program. But for both schools, the minimum cumulative average would be 70%. And at this time, international students are not eligible for internship. Um, this is because internships aren't required for your program. Now, going back to the cumulative average of 70%, if your average isn't quite there yet right now, however, at the end of first term of third year, so in kind of after your December exams, if your marks increase, and you'd like to be reevaluated because you're still interested in internship, you can just send us an email. We'll take a look at your academic record. And if you're now meeting that cumulative average of 70%, we can then give you access um, to the internship job portal, which we'll talk about later. Now, in terms of the internship to like get access to be able to see internship jobs, no application is required to get access to that job portal. Um, eligible students are added, I said in early November, but I actually had a chance to add eligible students today. And those students would have been notified by email. Um, so if you didn't receive an email today, it might mean that your marks are just a little bit below what we're looking for. But again, if your marks increase and your cumulative average hits 70% or higher, send us an email and we can definitely take a look and add you in January, which is when a lot of opportunities are going to get posted as well. Currently, there aren't any opportunities posted, but we anticipate that more will be coming. So nobody's missed out on anything yet. Now, with that, let's actually talk about the internship courses. So there are two courses, depending on your school. For health studies, it's $39.90. For kinesiology, it's $38.90. But the courses function in very similar ways. They're elective credits. They're 1.0 course credits. They're graded on a pass-fail scale. And they have a few different kinds of academic deliverables. First, uh, students will complete a learning contract alongside their supervisor, kind of setting the groundwork and the expectations of what we hope to achieve in an internship. There'll be some reflections at the midpoint and towards the end of the internship that the student completes, and also evaluations that the supervisor completes at both midterm and then also towards the end of the internship. So pretty much if a student passes all of these different items, they would then pass the course. But there are a few other academic details to think about. So interns are still considered full-time students, even though most interns will just be taking the internship course and no other courses. However, students can still be permitted to take a 0.5 credit, like a half credit per term, during internship, as long as they get permission from their academic advisors. So the most that you would ever be taking per term would be kind of like a 1.5, 1. 1. if you will, during internship. 
another academic detail is that interns must come back to full-time studies and complete their fourth year. So I get a lot of questions about if you can do an internship after your fourth year or if you can take a full course load while you're doing an internship. And the answer is no. So again, these typically happen in between their third and their fourth year. Students take the internship course and maybe another half credit per term, and then come back as a full-time student taking at least three and a half credits and would graduate um, and finish and complete their fourth year after their internship. Now with that, let's get into some of the fees. So internship fees are based on the length of the internship. So they kind of range with eight months being less expensive than 16 months. But just to keep in mind that these are internship fees and not tuition. What this means is that you are also not billed ancillary fees. Um, and those are the fees that pay for your bus pass, campus rec, that kind of thing. So these aren't things that you would um, have access to. Um, for campus rec, there is kind of like a deal that you can get as an intern. But for example, you wouldn't have access to a bus pass since you haven't been billed those ancillary fees. Along the fees, it's also important for people considering internships to connect with OSAP and the Student Financial Services Office um, about the continuation of interest-free status. This is because everyone's financial situation is a little bit different. However, the amount of income you're making on an internship versus a traditional year when you're in school could be pretty different. Um, so in some cases, this um, might kind of trigger you needing to start paying back some of your OSAP. It's just really important to connect with OSAP and student finances to kind of work that all out. And if you have any questions, again, because everyone's situation is different. Interns working in Canada will also be eligible for Purple Care. So that's your like health and dental benefits. And you do have the option to opt out. This is actually something new that was just implemented this September, or sorry, this year. So um, previous interns, like if you had a friend who did an internship, they might have had access to this. So just know if you're doing an internship within Canada, which currently all of our internships are, then you would be eligible for your Purple Care. And just like you opt out as a student not doing an internship, if you opt out by that date, I believe kind of like mid-September, um, or whatever it is for next year, then you would be able to opt out of that fee. But with that, that's kind of the majority of the administrative pieces that I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, friendly reminder that, again, we are using the Q&A box tonight, so feel free to put your questions in there as you have them. But now it's time to hear from some of our interns just before they uh, start telling you more about their experiences. I wanted to talk about historically where our interns have gone. So we've had interns working in ergonomics at Honda Canada, as talent management coordinators at sports agencies, working in disability management, working as analysts and assessors in various parts of our government, either at the government of Ontario level or even the government of Canada level. We also have a couple current interns right now that are working in research. One is supporting research at Sick Kids Hospital, and another one is working at St. Joseph's Healthcare, Healthcare in Hamilton, again, working as kind of like a research assistant, so uh, or a research administrative assistant, I should say. So just know that there's a pretty wide variety of experience uh, that our interns do, but we're lucky enough to have a few people here today to share a little bit more. So I'm gonna invite Emma, Sarish, and Sally to turn on their videos so they can tell us a little bit more about their experiences. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just during this time so we can have a, do a little bit of a panel discussion. Again, if you think of any questions that you really wanna ask our previous and current interns, be sure to put them in the chat as they're talking uh, so we can ask them while they're still with us on the call today. But with that, um, I would love you all to introduce yourselves. Maybe you can tell us your name, your program, where you did or are doing your internship and what that role was. 
Um, I'll start with Sally, who's uh, next up on my screen. Hi everyone. So like Alyssa said, my name is Sally. I'm in my fifth year of Ken. Um, I got to do my internship at the RCMP, so the Royal, Can RC, Can Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Um, and my title was the Health and Wellness Promotion Assistant. So essentially, I was working with the health and promotion advisors. So within the organization, there's a health and wellness program. So it entailed um, getting members healthy, um, whether that be physically, mentally, socially, whatever they may need within health and wellness. Um, I mostly looked over the physical side. So I actually got to help train members, um, kind of building programs for them to be physically active. Um, and yeah, just promoting the, uh, the program that we had within the organization because we looked all across of Ontario. So we got to travel quite a bit as well, which was really cool. Awesome, thank you, Sally. Uh, Sarish, over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Sarish. Um, I'm in my fifth year of rehabilitation sciences. Uh, last year I worked with um, Statistics Canada as a modern insight product assessor and my role basically entail entailed um, a lot of literature reviews on how to modernize um, the data to care uh, program at Statistics Canada and also a lot of other projects that didn't actually, um, I guess, correspond with the cancer statistics program, but with other departments as well. Amazing. And last but not least is Emma. Hi guys, my name is Emma, just like Alyssa said. Um, I'm currently in my fourth year of health sciences. Um, I'm currently on internship. Um, so I'm working as a rehab coordinator um, for Bayshore Healthcare, um, which is a company based in Mississauga, but um, it's more nationwide. Um, my current position is remote. So I get to work from London and I essentially work on a few different contracts. Um, the main one that I work on is a home to rehab program. Um, called Health Sciences North. And essentially, um, I help coordinate that contract by, um, well, the program itself is a fiscal, um, is a community-based physical therapy program based in Sudbury. So we partner with a hospital down there. Um, and essentially, they send us referrals, and I intake all those referrals, and we'll assign physiotherapists um, to different patients, um, track different patients' progress throughout the program, um, a lot of administrative work of keeping track of the program and patient's progress. Um, I also work on another contract called um, WSIB, which is working through the Workplace Safety Insurance Board. So essentially, if you got injured on the job, um, WSIB allows you to get medical coverage um, and hopefully get you back up and running to go back to work. Um, and I help format reports and upload those um, to that um, board. Um, and that's essentially my position. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks everyone for sharing a little bit about your position. So the first question I'm hoping you could answer uh, is why did you decide to do an internship? Um, anyone can start us off. Whoever feels most strongly about this question can begin and then feel free to layer in. I can go first. Um, so I think essentially, you know, as students, we kind of all stress about finding that summer job and um, just trying to recruit early. So I looked and I was looking in December, January, I think, just trying to find, you know, that job that would suit me and in my field. And I think I got an email saying something about doing internships within Ken and getting that credit, getting paid and, you know, getting that experience. Um, so I looked on the UWO Connect and I just somehow came across um, across this job I honestly didn't think I was going to get it because there's only one um, position available but I just thought it was really important like most of you have said that experience is super important to you all um, so just gaining that and I just knew that having a co-op um, position in the work field is important because they know you're a student and they know that you're just trying to gain that hands-on experience so it's not as much pressure 
in a big organization like the one I had. So they were kind of lenient and I was just lucky to get that position and really grateful that I did. So yeah, I think I answered the question. <laughs> Uh, I can add on to what Sally said. Um, for me specifically, I feel like I was like conditioned to wanting an internship because um, when I was in first year five years ago, all I would see are like all these signs on campus that were like health science internship, uh, like connect for more with like at the time, like the experiential coordinator, I think was um, Lisa. And it was like, connect with Lisa if you want to learn more. Um, so ever since my first year, I've kind of been like in um talks with like the office and being like okay so what could I possibly do um if I want to like go into like the rehab field maybe like what kind of jobs are there that students could like potentially do currently that would um really help them later on while doing like apps and stuff like that um another reason why I wanted to do an internship was because my best friend who's an eng uh was doing an internship and I was like I don't want to graduate before you I want to graduate with you so a random um little push but that was another reason why I wanted to do one for me, it was, I guess, almost the complete opposite. I didn't think internships were really a possibility for our program because, like, when I tried to get clinical work over the summer, I don't know if you guys have any experience with that, but, like, it was so hard to try and find anything because they wanted graduate students and didn't want, um, like, undergraduate students because a lot of, I was mainly interested in clinical. I hope to do speech language pathology in the future. So, of course, a lot of that is not as open to undergraduate students. So, I, logged on to Western Connect I think at one point you guys will hear a little bit about that later and I saw there was a position and I was kind of like you know what why not who knows what could happen like it's just was it wasn't something I was planning on or banking on but if I got it I mean why not have that experience um and I feel very lucky to be able to have that experience um I think one of the main reasons I ended up choosing to go through with it was because Knowing how competitive grad schools can be, I think having some experience and some diverse experience compared to someone else who would probably be applying to the program I'd want to do is a really nice way to help yourself stand out. And I think being able to network in your field and kind of be able to see healthcare from a bunch of different perspectives is really important, um, especially if you want to be a clinician. I think being able to understand things from the ground up before even getting involved with like kind of being face to face with a patient Um is really important and what I've kind of learned even for my supervisor um because while I do do a lot of administrative work I will be able to possibly shadow some um clinicians which is really cool um so you kind of are able to get the best of both worlds even if you think um I guess yeah sorry I'm going on a tangent now but <laughs> I think that answers the question yeah that's okay a little extra information never hurts amazing uh so just um thinking more about like your actual internship experiences emma i know yours has kind of just started um but what's kind of like the day-to-day -day like or was like uh for sally and sarish um so i was super lucky to have landed such a great position I went into it kind of thinking like oh like I'll just be like another office job you know I'll get paid whatever but it actually turned out to be a lot more than I expected so the position I was in I was mostly working one-on-one -on -one with my supervisor so like I briefly mentioned before um we oversaw kind of all of Ontario. So my boss was actually one of two people in that position. Um, so it was just him at the office, you know, like when everyone thinks of like the RCMP, they think of like the horses, the Mountie, like policing. Um, so we were kind of the odd, odd ones out actually at the office. We were more of the health people. Um, so it was just kind of us two. And it turned out to be more of a mentorship kind of role which is great and he really helped me kind of figure out what pathway I wanted to go down you know um he took me on like as a mentee he would kind of teach me about different pathways in life and how you know like in school like there's only so much they can say to you and there's so many other jobs out there that we don't even know about which is 
I think another reason why I took on this internship role is because to kind of gain that hands-on experience of what do I actually want to do like for me personally I knew I didn't want to do any sort of like clinical like physio chiro any of that kind of stuff so I knew I didn't want to do that but I was like what else is there what are the possibilities with my degree so he really helped me and he actually went to western was in kin as well and he also happened to be a chiro on the side as well so he was helping me a lot on that side and helped me kind of also apply some of <laughs> sorry um help me apply some of the stuff I was learning in class but just you know trying to help me figure out what what my strengths were um as a person to kind of I guess prosper in life so like for me like I would go in the office and we obviously there was stuff that we had to get done so for me like on certain days there would be members that would come in um and we would kind of do consults with them see what kind of goals they had in mind almost like I guess a personal trainer is the best way to describe it and just helping them get back into the shape to be able to do their job as a police officer if they needed to um, get called into duty um but yeah I kind of rambled there but yeah I definitely think my internship was very unique and special Um, for me, my kind of day to day, um, as I'm the main coordinator on that um, health sciences North contract, that's kind of what I'm mainly working on. So again, if we get a referral, I'm in taking a lot of that information and uploading it into an Excel sheet. Um, I'm making phone calls to patients to inform them about the program, um, working with my managers to make sure that all um, uh, the key point indicators for the program are uploaded onto an Excel sheet so we can keep track of how effective the program is going. Um, I also will get assigned throughout the day a couple of reports to format and upload to that um, WSIB portal that I was talking about. Um, what's also been really cool and unique um, is that um, our company does a lot of fundraisers. Um, so each kind of division has their own charity that they donate to. Ours is CMHA, so the Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, so I've been able to become part of a couple fundraising committees um, and usually have a couple meetings um, a week uh, for those. So we have Halloween coming up next week, and then we're doing one for Christmas as well, which has been a really great way, one, to meet the rest of the team who I don't always work with on a day-to-day, -day, um, and also just to be more involved and fun and integrated into the company. Um, and I think that kind of gives a gist of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, for me, when it came to the day-to-day -day basis on work, um, I primarily had my internship be, it was like a really weird time since it was like COVID and then non-COVID, well, or something like that. So sometimes it would be remote and sometimes we'd have to go into the um, office. And since I was in an Ottawa, I was in Toronto, I would go to the North York office. Um, but since my internship was primarily research-based, I did a lot of, I guess, like figuring out what tasks I had to do in order to find like the information I needed for a couple of different projects that I was working on. Um, also did a little, a lot of like little tasks. And I actually really loved like this one aspect of the job of like being able to go to like different seminars and like having the team meetings about those seminars. Um, for example, like because I was in Statistics Canada, a lot of the seminars were on um, different parts of like the economy or like different parts of like, I guess like Canadian society in general, right? So like we would learn about this like information that the rest of the public wouldn't have access to just yet, but like we'd be able to like talk about it and like kind of have like a little bit of like a peer review session with like the analysts and the specialists who were talking about it. So like always looked forward to that those days. And like, just like Sally, we had like um, a lot of um, opportunities to be mentored by like either our own like supervisors or by like the student network team and like honestly I love the interns who are working with me because like we were all from like western basically and there'd be that one odd like UFT student or one odd like U Alberta student out of nowhere um so it just felt really like family like and very like comfortable working in the internship that I was able to take part in Awesome. I love hearing more details about all your experiences. They all sound so different, but um, super valuable um, in different ways, nonetheless. 
Um, I was also wondering when you were kind of going through the application process for internship, were there any resources or anything you used that was helpful if it was like an appointment or a workshop or anything like that? Um, I went to uh, Career Western um, and I had one of their staff review my resume, which I thought was really, really helpful. I would highly recommend going, even if you're not applying for an internship um, and are just looking for a regular job, like in, well, a job like for the summer um, or even on campus. They're a really fantastic resource to look into. Um, always better to have another set of eyes because you'll miss something for sure. It's even asking like your friends for help too. Sometimes just like advice again, having another pair of eyes is always helpful. Yeah, I got sent, I don't know if you can find it online, but I got sent one of those like Ivy um, cover letter resume templates kind of thing. So I kind of followed that. And then I'm lucky where uh, one of my roommates is in English. So I get her to proofread everything of mine which is like I'm lucky enough to have that so that's just kind of how I went through it I honestly just got my parents to read it over because I'm like if it's in layman terms and like my dad he loves like looking at punctuation and stuff like that so it's like if I haven't caught it yet they'll catch it Amazing. I think we're we're getting the point here, right? Like getting another pair of eyes, if it's a parent, if it's a friend, a roommate, or maybe a career coach, it's always nice to have someone else review your resume to make sure it's nice and easy to read. It's understandable to someone that isn't you. And also that it's error free. I think we've all worked on that assignment before when you've like read it and read it and you wrote it and rewrote it and you don't see the mistakes anymore. You need that fresh perspective. And don't worry, we'll talk more about the different resources available on campus later in our session. But uh, just before I ask my last question, I want to remind anyone that if you have a specific question for one of our interns, uh, be sure to put it in the uh, Q&A box. I can see a couple questions in there now. They seem more general, so we'll hold on to those two until the end. But if you have a question for Sally, Emma, or Sarish, make sure you get it in before the end of my last question which is, um, is there any advice that you would give to someone considering an internship? Anything that you think would be helpful for them to know? Just go for it. Oh, sorry. I'm, um, just go for it. Like you really don't know what opportunities are out there. Even if you think it's an opportunity that you may not be interested in, like kind of, as I said, I'm really interested in like clinical work and my job is definitely more administrative, but like you never know what kind of opportunities may fall into your lap just working through like any kind of um, job that you do. Um, like I've really found that like one, I've gained a really new perspective on healthcare, um, like a more systems-based perspective, which I think is really helpful and I'll hopefully be able to apply to my career. I also think I've really gained a mentor and my supervisor who has been able to get, she works as an RKIN. Um, so she's been able to give me some advice about clinical work and um, I'll even hopefully have the opportunity to shadow some clinicians and maybe even travel with some clinicians and you know get to like explore what else is there in healthcare which I think is a really really cool thing to be able to do and um, I would just encourage you to go for it because you really never know what's out there and what you could learn and find out about yourself. Yeah adding on to Emma like you never know who you're gonna meet during these internships and who they might know and like might connect you to someone who you may have an interest in their field and also like I know there's like that big oh it's gonna make me fall behind a semester you're gonna graduate maybe a little later than all your friends and so you just have to weigh that sacrifice and to me like kind of having the opportunity for real life experience was more important um, to kind of gain that rather than graduating with your friends. Obviously, that was my personal experience and choice. Um, so if you're not in a rush to graduate, it's a great way, you know, you get paid, you get a credit, um, you get to like experience, you know, what you do and don't like. Hopefully you get an internship that you do enjoy. But if you don't, you know, now you know what you don't like and you can move forward and kind of cross that off your checklist. But I think experience is super, super important. 
Um, adding on to both Sally and Emma, I really also want to say like, I know that the internship like process, just like trying to get an internship, I can't lie to you, probably the most like stressful three months of my life, <laughs> at least in third year. But um, I just wanted to say, don't feel discouraged if you get like rejections or don't get like the responses that you want from like specific like organizations because trust me like I've gotten those and I'm like oh it'd be a little rough sometime but like, you will definitely get like that one organization that really really wants you and like just adding on to that um don't be afraid to like apply to multiple um I guess like positions within that same organization like for me I um personally applied to like three or four of the positions that Statistics Canada was um uh, looking to fill and I didn't get my first choice but I still got one that I'm actually really happy that I got this one rather than the one I actually wanted um transferable skills are really really important I feel like more than what you're actually like uh more than like specific skills so like with all that being said it's like don't feel discouraged because trust me you will get the organization that is best for you Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that advice. I can really just echo it. It's important to put yourself out there, give it a try, weigh those pros and cons. Um, again, especially when you're considering extending your degree by a bit, it's an amazing choice, but it isn't the choice for everybody. And also um, job hunting is hard and it's not it can be discouraging at times. I've been there not I never did an internship, but I can tell you I've been declined for many jobs that I wanted, but it's about finding that right fit both for you and the organization. So when it comes together, it's it's really awesome, right? Um, so thank you to Sally, Sarah, and Emma for spending some time with us tonight. Your experience is so valuable and thank you for taking the time. I know you're either busy at, with work or busy with classes. So uh, thanks for sharing with us today. Uh, we all appreciate it so much. Thank you. So, so let's talk more about Western Connect, which is the site um, that we've all been talking a lot about. This is kind of our main hub for internships. It's connect.uwo.ca, and you can also access it through this QR code. All right. So when you log into Western Connect, this is what your screen will look like. So uh, there's a variety of different tabs on the left and purple. Um, there's that button right there to click for internship and co-ops. We're gonna click that later and show you what those screens look like. But also on the right are some upcoming events in the system. Not all of them are going to be relevant to you, but it's nice to see what's coming up in case you log in that day and something's coming up that you've missed. But say you either clicked on the left tab for internship and co-op or you click that nifty little button right there. Uh, this is the next screen that you would see. And this is what it's going to look like uh, for students that are, have been, that are academically eligible that have been added into the internship portal. If you're not in third year yet or you're not academically eligible yet, your view will be a little bit different, but this is what it will look like once you're eligible so you can actually see the jobs. So it will show you the date that you got added. It will tell you the internship. So this student here is for health studies internship. And then you'll see where it talks about terms. There's work terms and there's study terms. So what you'll see is that this student for winter 2024, they're studying. Um, so they're still in their third year and they're looking maybe to start an internship as soon as spring, summer 2024, which is why that one says work. Now this can be a little bit different, especially if you're looking into the fall, but just know that means that this student will be able to see jobs that would start uh, in May. Now, when they're in the internship portal, the internship job, not to be confused with where it says job postings. So those are like full-time jobs, summer jobs, uh, part-time jobs. You'll wanna go to internship jobs and it will look like this. It'll say internship co-op postings at the top. And what you'll see is there's for my program. Those are jobs that have specifically been posted to maybe health studies or Ken. Um, right now, I don't believe we have any postings in the system since we just added students today. Again, no one's been missing out on anything. And what I will say is that our internship program is rather small. Like we typically, right now we have four students on internship. Last year we had about seven. So we don't have hundreds and hundreds of students. So that also means that you won't see 
maybe dozens of postings at a time. You certainly won't see hundreds of postings at a time. They'll be a little bit more sporadic, which means it's important to check back at Western Connect if you're interested in an internship to see if there have been any updates um, and to see what's out there because it really depends on the company when something is going to get posted. Some things will be posted for longer periods of time, depending on their hiring practices. Some things might be like a week or two weeks. So just make it kind of part of your routine if you're thinking strongly about internship to check back and see what jobs um, postings are available. Now, sometimes when you apply to a job in Western Connect, um, it will ask you to maybe upload your documents through Western Connect, like resume, cover letter, maybe unofficial transcript. Sometimes it will direct you to an employer website to apply there, maybe an employer email. And when it comes around to doing interviews, sometimes employers will coordinate that through their own system or email or a phone call. But sometimes they'll also use Western Connect and you'll receive an interview invitation, sign up for a spot and connect with employers um, and get the details this way. So just know that your internship co-op interviews can all be found here. So you can see unscheduled interviews. That would be ones that you've been invited to, but you haven't signed up for yet. Booked would mean you've been invited and you selected and confirm your time slot. Decline would be if you said no to an interview and it can keep track of them here as well. Now, this is the main part of Western Connect that you should be looking at if you're interested in internship, but the system does lots of amazing things. Another important part as it relates to internship are checking out events. And this is an, the events calendar, just a screenshot from October. Um, and all those events that are kind of in that like purple, pinky, magenta color are employer information sessions. So definitely going to those for the employers you're considering uh, or are curious about is great. It's a great way to learn about opportunities, learn more about the organization, but it's also a great way to be start to become known by those hiring managers. Um, sometimes going to an information session and, you know, networking with an employer can be the difference between getting an interview and not getting an interview. So looking at these can be super helpful. Also, something else that you'll see just above the event calendar in the gray on the left, you'll see appointments. And that's how you can engage in some of the appointments that Emma was mentioning uh, with our career coaches on campus. Uh, these appointments, like you can talk to them about job hunting, what you want to do with your life. You can talk about resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, so many different things. They also offer workshops that you can see in the red in this event calendar. And their team also offers things like mock interviews that you can do over Zoom or in person, which can be really helpful. So you can prepare. So you're making mistakes in your practice and not in your interview. Now we've talked a lot about Western Connect, but just know that some students will source and find their own internship opportunities. We have one student that did that this year who's currently on internship. So this could be from maybe a pre-existing relationship. Maybe you've done volunteering or a part-time job or done some networking to connect with an organization. Um, or you've learned a lot about them and you're curious. So before you reach out to them, or if you already have that personal connection, please just send us an email because there is paperwork and administrative process that needs to be done well in advance, like months in advance on the front end to make sure that you're meeting all of the requirements for an internship, get you enrolled in the course, make sure you're paying the right tuition fees, and also make sure it's going to be a good experience for both you and the employer. So again, what we don't want to happen is that you're already working somewhere and then trying to create an internship. This needs to happen on the front end with many, many months notice. So just send us an email and we'd be happy to connect with you. Um, also, sometimes connecting with us can be great because Maybe just by chance, my colleague Allison, who works with our partners, might have already been in contact with someone from the organization you're thinking about, and something could be in the mix and underway. 
Now, as we talked about, it's important to start getting ready because uh, job hunting is a lot of work and it's something that you'll be juggling with your studies. So career.uwo.ca is a great place to get started. That's where this QR code goes. There'll be lots of resources there. You can see a list of their information sessions. It will link you to Western Connect to book appointments with career coaches. And they also offer drop-in hours in the University Community Center, UCC 210, that's right above the Starbucks on the main floor. Uh, Monday to Friday in the afternoons, you can go and see them. They're a really wonderful team. But with that, I wanna thank you for spending some time with me today. If you have any questions, you can email us at experiencefhs, that goes to myself and my colleague, Allison,